I'm so happy to be here to have this opportunity to share my work with you. And I'm Ruben Perez. I'm a graduate student from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. And the work that I'm going to present you is a collaboration with the Claremont University and the Grenoble University. So hope you guys enjoy it. Before getting started, I want you to take a couple of seconds to, uh, to think about this question. What are the main setbacks that you face when doing face research? Um, maybe you have thousands of them, but I would like to talk about two in specific. Proteins with unknown function and unidentified phages. Yep. We are all here trying to use phages as an alternative to multidrug resistant bacteria. So of course, we don't want to introduce a Trojan horse to our food or patients in a clinical trial. So to avoid it, we need fully annotated genomes. And we all know that in some cases it's really hard to achieve or almost impossible. So what's the problem with this? Uh, what hampers our attempts to succeed? We know that the lack of knowledge of viral diversity only allows us to see the peak of the iceberg. Um, we have a lot of bias. Some databases are just focused in some specific hosts that are cultivable in laboratory. Also, some biomes uh, or microbiome analysis are only uh, human samples. So we lost a lot of diversity. So this yields a limited knowledge of protein function. So you have a protein and you start asking you, why is this? Maybe it's a capsid protein, maybe participates in the lysis, lysis of the whole cell, or in the worst scenario, it's a toxin that you would like to avoid in your study. On the other hand, uh, maybe you're studying the, a microbiome in a specific environment. It doesn't really matter if it, the sample comes from environments such as soil or a host associated ecosystem. You suddenly realize that a huge bunch of your data, of your genomic data, doesn't match with anything reported in current databases. So you feel like you are lost in the space. Yeah, this space is so, it's also called the viral dark matter. So, these are two frequent problems that you are facing right now in your research. And I'm so happy to uh, introduce you, our work, the so-called end of dialysis. Uh, the aim of shading light over the phage protein uncertainty. So a brief description of this database. Uh, its name comes from environmental viral homologous groups. Uh -huh. And it's a huge database. Uh, it includes almost 95 million proteins gathered together into 12 million clusters and also has almost 10 million DNA copies. So it's a really big database. Also, it's a taxonomic gallery because we encompass 61 viral orders from different hosts. Moreover, it's a wide population of environments, from macro environments to micro ecosystems. And finally, it's a deeply annotated database. We provide over uh, 20 million annotated proteins. Okay. So the order of this presentation, uh, I would like to tell you about our process. How do we manage to make this database? Share you some top results. And the most important part is that I would like you to feel confident that you will use this database. Okay, a little bit of a process. So uh, we collected published biomes from all around the world. We tried to embrace as much diversity 
and environments as possible. So we collected over 3,000 uh, environments. In this way, we try to cover as much environments as possible. Uh, most, of, most of them are host associated environments. So inside the host associated environments, uh, our samples range from plants to insects and of course, human samples. So most of our collected environments are from human samples. So this is our pipeline. We took those published virons and analyzed them with the tool Bill Sorter 2, which predicts viral context and viral proteins. So we only select those proteins from context labeled as full viral. So this yielded uh, almost, well, more than 27 million proteins that will merge to other databases, such as GLUBAF and IMGBR. Okay, so in this way, we managed to conform almost 95 million proteins. Yeah, so those million proteins were clustered in two iterative clustering process. The first one called uh, shallow clustering. We tried to reduce the redundancy in our database based on the coverage and the identity. So 95 million proteins were clustered into 30 million clusters. 12 million of them have more than two proteins. Yeah, so the idea was to gather together two similar proteins into the same cluster, but also to assemble fragments into the same uh, protein and the same cluster. And second step of clustering, uh, also called deep cluster, we also use the MM622. Uh, we were able to cluster those 30 million shallow clusters into 12 million clusters. 5 million of them have two or more proteins. So in this way, two similar clusters will be merged into the same deep cluster. Here is important to highlight that we didn't set any identity threshold since viral or phage proteins genes uh, mutate very fast. So uh, two proteins could have the same function, but different composition. Yeah. So a deep cluster will be integrated by multiple full length proteins and multiple fragments. So all, our clustering model emulates a matryoshka like uh, doll. So this is the process that we use to cluster 95 million proteins into 12 million clusters. Then we use multiple analysis to assign a function, taxonomy, and analyze the diversity inside each cluster. And in this way, we managed to build and make end of database. So some top results, if we compare the cluster sizes, in our two, uh, our two clustering steps, we can see that in the first one, almost all our proteins are clustered into small size clusters. After the second clustering step, we have clusters uh, with more than 20,000 proteins. So this is really interesting because it tells us that they are really conserved proteins that could be hallmark proteins to identify some functions or identify noble viral species or genes. Then we analyze the diversity inside each cluster. So we compare the diversity of our database to other published databases such as Uniclust, that is a bacteria protein database, and Prox, that is a bacteria, uh, phage protein database. So here we can see that our cluster are really homogeneous.
Then we proceed to assign a taxonomy to our clusters using the RevSec virus database. Also, because much of our clusters were not directly identified by RevSec, we managed to create a predictive taxonomy model. So let's suppose that we have a contig A that has five proteins, all of them in different clusters. RevSec will only be able to identify three of those clusters into the Coda viralis order. So what happened with the other two proteins? Well, because the Coda viralis order was the most abundant one in the contig A, we also assign those clusters, those proteins, into the Coda viralis order. So we can say that all the contig A and its proteins belong to Coda viralis order. So this is a pretty interesting uh, bar plot because it tells us the diversity of viral orders in uh, different uh, items like clusters, contigs, directly identified proteins by RevSec and the predicted proteins. So we can see that Codomiralis is the predominant order in our database, we, but we also have other 60 orders, mainly Agavirales, uh, emitter virales and petit virales. So if you're interested in analyzing um, not usual phages or not usual viruses, we are your database. This database is tailor-made for you uh, because we encompass a wider uh, diversity and collection of viral entities. So for example, we have more than 80 million proteins belonging to Colobiralis, but also Petit Viralis that is less than 1% of the database has a huge amount of proteins. So we assign a function to our clusters using the FROX database. So we can see that most of the database, half of them, belong to structural proteins, such as head and packaging, or tail structural proteins. But also, we have a lot of proteins involved in the DNA metabolism. So now we are all interested on proteins responsible for the cell lysis. So we have more than 1 million proteins tagged with this function. Or if you're interested in the replication machinery, uh, viral genome, we have more than 6 million proteins with that function. So we, have, we are a golden mine for your study. So who will use the database, the NBOC database? We want you to use it. We made this database for you to help you to have all the information that you need in the same place. Function, taxonomy, diversity. So as take home message, NBOC is the largest database to date, has highly homogeneous clusters. It's a weather annotation protein source. And finally, it's a candle against the viral dark matter. So when someone asks me what is NBOG, it's an easy question because NBOG is making the viral data simple. So thank you so much for your attention. I would like to thank to Francois Nolk and Franz, uh, Clovis Gallius, the, they are my tutors. And thank you so much for letting me work with you. Uh, thank you for your attention.